haven't changed a bit, have they? This is footage from the original pilot of The Simpsons, entitled Some Enchanted Evening. Of course, if you're familiar with The Simpsons, you'll know that Some Enchanted Evening ended up being the finale of the show's first season, which aired on May 13th, 1990. It's the one where Bart and Lisa get a new babysitter, Mrs. Butts, who ties them up whilst Marge and Homer go out for a romantic evening, before the kids manage to outsmart and turn the tables on her. It's one of those stories from the first season, a bit like the Telltale Head and There's No Disgrace Like Home, that are sort of remembered for a couple of iconic moments, but aren't generally considered standout episodes of the first season. Given this, Some Enchanted Evening really wouldn't have much of a place in the show's history outside of closing the show's revolutionary first season, but the episode was actually originally intended to be the first episode of the series, and introduce us to America's favourite yellow family for the first time. The problem, however, was that the resulting episode came out horribly, horribly wrong. It's important to understand the context for this. Back in the late 1980s, The Simpsons began life as a series of animated shorts on The Tracy Ullman Show, which were basically used as a means by which to provide interludes between commercial breaks. Whilst the series initially started out incredibly crudely, Well, good night, son. Um, Dad? Yeah? What is the mind? By the end of the third season of animated shorts, the animation of The Simpsons, as well as the scripts, had become increasingly sophisticated and well-drawn, and became the most popular part of the Tracy Ullman show, with members of the crew frequently stringing clips together to play back for the show's live studio audience. The popularity of these shorts led James L. Brooks to consider adapting them for a full-length series, and although the idea of having an animated show occupy a primetime slot was unheard of at the time, Matt Groening and James L. Brooks sought to overcome this through one particular technique, realism. I've seen a lot of people call the early seasons of The Simpsons crude in the past, and whilst to some extent there may be some truth in that statement, I think it's important to remember just how influential The Simpsons' animation style was on the future of animated television. At the time, mainstream animation was dominated by three established styles, those of Disney, Warner Brothers, and Hanna-Barbera, styles which were centred around exaggerated movements and elastic environments. With The Simpsons, Groening and Brooks were determined to do something different and feature realistic characters in environments that felt grounded in every day life. This realism was at the forefront of what Groening and Brooks wanted The Simpsons to be, and helped inform many of the show's early decisions regarding its tone. As John Ortbed, author of The Simpsons and Uncensored Unauthorised History Notes, Groening in particular was militant in regards to this realistic approach to the show's world, even going as far as attempting to halt production on the animation of Bart the Daredevil behind the team's back after finding out about the cartoonishness of the sequence in which Homer jumps over Springfield Gorge. With this in mind, the scripts for the first 13 episodes were sent to Claspy Cuspo, the animation studio that had produced the original Simpsons shorts, before being subcontracted to the South Korean animation studio, Acom. And the results were this. Well, tonight is a very special night. Your father is taking me out for dinner and dancing. Peppered with characters who look neither anything like the characters we're used to, nor the animations utilised during the Tracy Ullman years, the version of the show which was returned to the Simpsons production team was almost creepy, and the reaction was suitably one of confusion and anger. Can't imagine how bad it was, that you can be a little off and they became sort of grotesque and everything was horrible. Um, well, they, they were, the, the characters were rubbery and ugly, I mean uglier, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, there were extra gags that we didn't write into the show. Part of the problem lay in the fact that there was something of a miscommunication between Groening, Brooks, and animation director Kent Butterworth about the direction of the series. Whilst Groening and Brooks were determined to create a series with a unique colour scheme and on-model animation, Butterworth decided to employ an off-model style, which would be unique in its own way, but not remotely in line with the rest of the creative team's vision. This off-model design meant that each frame was a totally new drawing, something that was utilised by cartoons like Ren and Stimpy in the 1990s. Whilst it certainly looks distinct in parts, it also feels very out of place when contrasted with the very grounded script which Some Enchanted Evening utilises. It also seemed at odds with the increasingly sophisticated stylings of the animated shorts, with Butterworth seemingly harking back to the cartoons of old, with environments which seemed almost as alive as the characters. You only have to look at the way that doors are shut, or the strange curvature of the nuclear power plant, to see that this version of the show owes more to classic animated shows like Popeye, and the realism sought after by Groening and Brooks. This classical styling can also be seen in the way in which the characters move, like the way Marge's lips extend when she tries to kiss Homer before becoming stuck to the doorframe as if they're made of glue. Although, fun fact, you can still see remnants of this style in the finished episode, with the lipstick mark that suddenly appears on the door when Marge and Homer leave for their date. That's a remnant from this pilot, and I love that no one noticed it. As was noted in the commentary for the episode, 
Butterworth, Klasky Cuspo, and Akon seem to completely disregard their notes, such in the sequence where Marge and Homer dance during their date. And I remember this is a middle-aged couple who has not been dancing for years, and they're very clumsy and they're very stiff, but they're in love. Let's see, let's see what happens. Contrast this with the version that we get in the finished version of the episode. It becomes clear that the animation team had shot for something completely different. James L. Brooks in particular was disappointed with the episode's quality, getting into a heated argument with Claspy Cusco over there and Acom's work on the episode. In the dark, Jim, you said, this is shit. And there was silence. And one of the animators said, what do you mean shit? <laughs> and you said, a foul substance which causes disease. And that's when the room emptied. In fact, the entire show was nearly cancelled as a result of the poor quality of the episode, with the team having to beg Fox for more time in order to avoid them from showing the finished product. Oh, and remember, really I mean, we, me. we I kept Fox was bullets. supposed to come and see the show. And we made up an excuse, and I don't remember what the excuse was, because we wanted to wait till more animation came in to see whether or not we had anything to show for all our troubles. I think it was some preposterous stories about being ashamed of our work so far. <laughs> <laughs> However, the second episode returned, Bart the Genius abandoned this style altogether in favour of the style of the original animated shorts, which meant that The Simpsons was thankfully saved from being consigned to the dustbin of television history, with Fox agreeing to a delay in production in order to ensure that the remaining episodes were up to par. This resulted in the premiere of the show being delayed to December, and Simpsons roasting on an open fire becoming the show's first ever episode. This delay didn't just benefit the episode in terms of its animation, however, as the team were also able to spend more time tightening the scripts, which resulted in Marge's monologue at the beginning of the episode I dread the day when you realise you're a separate human being being cut in favour of bringing us straight into the action and showing the Simpsons family's chaotic breakfast routine. So come on in, Bill! Bad news, drivers! There's an overturned melon truck on the interstate! But the episode still feels weirdly placed as a series finale, in part because it still feels so different to the show that The Simpsons developed into as it progressed across its first season. The plot of Some Enchanted Evening feels very much like a testing ground for the show. Whilst the basis of Homer and Marge's relationship feels well defined, and the conflict which ignites the episode's plot feels in line with future episodes that would explore their relationship in more detail, Bart and Lisa feel far less defined, and given that the series spent some time highlighting them as more complex characters in episodes like The Creps of Raph and Moaning Lisa, the rendering of them as bratty kids feels like a huge step back. Also, it's interesting that the episode still retains some of the elements that give away that this is still a show in its fledgling years. Notice, for example, the absence of Santa's little helper, the dog the family acquired in the Christmas special, or the fact that the episode is without a couch gag, instead just literally having the characters sit down on the sofa and watch TV. As a whole, the episode feels tonally like an extended version of the show's Tracy Ullman shorts, with a slight plot whose beats fail to match the sophistication of more developed episodes in the first series, like Christy Gets Busted or Life on the Fast Lane and the show would show much more development in its second episode to be produced, Bart the Genius, which, with its satirical take on the American education system, provided a much better look into the way The Simpsons would grow and develop than some enchanted evening. But the episode remains an important one in the show's history, if only for its troubled production, which, had the team not been able to recover the episode from certain doom, would have led to The Simpsons being cancelled altogether, and animation and TV history would have gone down a completely different path. Thank you for watching another full fat video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of our deep dives into reality TV. Also, huge thanks to all of our patrons, especially Dr. GK, Jax Merrick, and Mike Nandu. You're all amazing. Until next time, stay.